Hello everyone, welcome to today's webinar. My name is Michael and in a few moments I'll be passing the stage over to Helen to talk about the subject of managing medications. But first, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, as normal, um, there's a little bit of delay between us and you guys, so that means we'll be asked, answering all questions at the end. So feel free to use the question and answer feature part of this webinar whilst watching. Um, also, this webinar is designed for people who already have some involvement in medications within the home. Um, it's here to help further understand your role and to develop your training just a little bit further. Right, but for now, I'm going to pass you over to Helen, who's going to tell you a little bit about herself and start the webinar. So, Helen, go ahead. Hi, thank you, Michael. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar. For those of you who don't know me, I've worked for Prime Life for four years and I'm involved in everything medication, including developing new training packages, audits and email. Previously to my joining Prime Life, I worked for several pharmacies supporting care homes all over the country. I think of myself as a people person and I hope you find this webinar a useful support tool. So let's begin today's session. Today, we're going to be looking at managing medications. Today, we're going to be covering the classifications of medicines, prescriptions, the medication label, record, record keeping on Mars, time critical medication, and medication not available. So firstly, let's look at the legal classifications of medications. All medicines have a legal classification. Prescription only medication or the POM are only available on prescription. A P medicine are pharmacy only medications and they're only available under the supervision of a pharmacy and they will have the letter P on the box. GSL medicines are general sales list medicines which can be sold without a pharmacist present and from a wider variety of, of outlets, for example, supermarkets. And these will have GSL on the packaging. The P or POM med classification is always displayed on the medications packaging. Have a look on your medication boxes and you will see this. In addition to prescribed medicines, residents can also buy an increasing range from their local community pharmacy and a smaller range from other shops such as supermarkets. Medicines brought in this way are often referred to as over-the-counter medicines or OTC medicines. Whatever their classification and whether obtained on a prescription or not, all medicines have the potential to cause problems and interact with other medicines. This does also include herbal medications and vitamins. All medications brought into the care home by relatives or residents should be given to the home manager to document onto the MAR. Brought medications should not be considered safer than prescribed ones. Residents should always be advised to ask their doctor or pharmacist if they have any concerns and to always tell their doctor, pharmacist or even their dentist if they're taking any over-the-counter medicines. It is important to ensure that the MAR chart is kept up to date, whether this is on a paper MAR chart or an EMAT for, EMAR format. How prescriptions should be written. Prescriptions should have a full, clear and concise directions. The use of as directed or no directions can be very confusing, especially for elderly residents and people taking a lot of medications. Residents can often forget the instructions the doctors may have told them and can end up taking the medication in the wrong way. This is one of the reasons why we are trained to administer medications on their behalf. It is also difficult to monitor compliance on the GP's computer unless the directions are clear. For example, whether the resident is taking tablets once a day or four times a day will make a big difference to how long 
a set supply will last them. So for example, if a tablet is taken once daily, then the monthly supply should be 28 tablets. If it's to be given four times a day, then the monthly, uh, the monthly quantity should be 112. There is a move nationally for hospitals to use residents' own drugs while they're in the hospital. However, if there's no directions, they cannot be used in hospital and will be destroyed, increasing wastage. For items only be taken used when required, a maximum daily dosage and interval should be included. For example, paracetamol two every four to six hours and no more than eight a day. Remember to document the time, the reason and why it was given and the outcome on the MAR charts. Any information regarding to patient care, for example, prescriptions, discharge letters and requests for medication changes must be clear, concise and not open to interpretation. The medication label. This should be checked each time a medication is administered. Remember to add the date of opening and expiry date if it's appropriate to do so. What we have here is the name of the medication, the strength of the medication, the form of the medication. So in this example, the form is the cream, but it could be tablets, gel, suspension, etc. Directions or the dosage. So the directions on this example is applied to the affected area three times a day for seven days. The quantity, which on this example is 15 grams. The name of the resident. The date of dispensing, which is on here. This is not the expiry date, which we'll look at later and any cautionary and advisory labels, which are also called CALs. The cautionary advisory label on this is spread thinly onto the affected skin only. There are 10 items on a pharmacy label. The resident's name, so the name of the resident, the name of the medication, and remember, medications can often have two names, a generic name, so that's the actual name of the medication, and the branded name given by the, given by the manufacturer. So a good example of this is ibuprofen tablets is the generic name, the brand name is Nurofen. The strength of the medication, and this can be written in various ways, either grams, milligrams, micrograms. It's really important to check the strength of the medication because sometimes we have tablets available in five milligrams and 0.5 micrograms. It's very, very careful that we don't change, uh, that we check this and make sure that we're given the right um, strength. The formulation, this could be a tablet, capsule, liquid, cream, ointment or patch. The duration, if applicable, so this is the length of the course. And again, when we look at antibiotics, it, this is really important. So is it for three days, five days, seven days, or is it a lifetime antibiotic? Always check the duration. The quantity supplied, we must always have the correct quantity documented on the EMAR or the paper MAR chart. This helps us when we're going back and doing our audit trails. The date of dispensing. So this is the date that's on the medication label and it's the date that the pharmacy actually dispensed the item. The directions for use, how the medication is to be administered, for example, one day, or twice a day, 
and as we said before, any cautionary and advisory labels. So these often state things like with or without food or 30 minutes before any other medication. It's really important that we check these and take the advice given to ensure that our residents are being given the right medication at the right time in the right way. And also on every medication um, dispensed by a pharmacy, they will always have the words keep out of reach of children. Now we're going to have a look at different formulations. So medications can come in various uh, forms. Why is this? Well, let's have a look at the forms. So we can have suppositories, which are rectal, and examples of these are paracetamol and diazepam. Why do we give this medication via the rectum? It's because it's very fast acting. It's suitable for medications that are destroyed within the gut um, or that, you know, the resident needs that medication very, very quickly. We have capsules and tablets. They're taken by mouth. Um, there's a couple of different versions of these. So we have buccal tablets, which are put in the side of the mouth, in the pouch between the cheek and the tongue. And then we have sublingual tablets that are placed under the tongue. Capsules are very easy to swallow. And sometimes when people have uh, swallowing difficulties, doctors will prescribe capsules rather than tablets. Gels, creams and ointments. These are topical medications and they apply to the body in the affected area. These can either be applied sparingly or sparsely, or uh, they could be administered quite thickly, depending on the type of medication that it is. Ampules, vials and injections. This could be for pain relief or insulin. Um, when it's insulin, this tends to be administered by a nurse, either into the muscle or just under the skin. We can look at slow release tablets or capsules. And again, these are taken orally. And these medications give a constant supply of the drug, reducing the need to have more doses throughout the day, and it keeps their level at, at a certain rate. If it's a so, slow release tablet, you will often see MR, CR or PR on the packaging. We have dispersible tablets and the most common of these, one that you probably see every day, is aspirin. This is easy to swallow and fast acting. We have liquid and suspensions. Again, these are easier to swallow and often a more pleasant tasting um, for our residents to take. There are patches which are applied to the body for medication to be absorbed through the skin. And then we have drops which are usually instilled into the eye or ear or nose, but can be taken orally. And an example of this is the talapump drops. Um, take care when administrating drops. Check and check again the route that they are to be given. For directions or dosage, as we said previously, these should be clear and concise. Take as directed directions should be clarified with the prescriber or the pharmacy. However, some medications like insulin and warfarin can be labelled as directed as doses can often be variable and change depending on um, blood tests. Cautionary and advisory labels are warnings put on by the pharmacist's computer system if the medication has any precautions. And as we said before, it's really important that we take heed of these and take them uh, and administer them to our, uh, our residents as prescribed. The date on the pharmacy label. The expiry date for any medication will always be found on the actual box, blister or bottle. It is not on the pharmacy label. This date 
is the date that the pharmacy dispensed the medication. Some medications may be prescribed as short courses and the date on the product label is the date of dispensing, as we've said before, and not the expiry date. Steroids, oral and topical, antifungals, nisatin, oral suspension, sleeping tablets, antibiotics should always have the duration on the prescribe on the prescription and the label and always put the date of opening on box medication. Remember, Oromorph has an expiry date of 90 days once it's been opened. If in doubt, always refer to your pharmacist or, or prescriber or ask your clinical lead or manager. Alternatively, look at the patient's uh, information leaflet, the PIL, in the medication box. Record keeping. It's a legal requirement to keep full records, paper or electronic, on all medication that is in the care home setting, which includes the five audits, medication ordered, medications received, medications administered, medications refused or returned, and any additional information. These are all on your mar charts, whether they're paper or electronic. We should only sign the march chart when we personally see the resident taking the dose of medication. For variable doses, for example, laxido sachets take one or two, we need to record the actual dose that we were given. So whether we gave one sachet or two sachets. Paracetamol time should be recorded on the march chart or the paracetamol timesheet. It is really important that we allow the four hour gap between paracetamol doses. The medications given regularly, there should never be any gaps on the medication chart. If a dose is declined, then a code should always be entered and explain brief, briefly over leaf. If you see a missing signature, then challenge it at the time to ensure it's addressed and reported to the manager for further investigation. On our email system, overdue orders is a missing signature and these will be highlighted on the dashboard. Missing signatures do not always mean missed doses, but the MAR charts are a legal document and need to be completed accurately. Here is an example of a MAR chart and remember, if it's not documented, it didn't happen. Time critical medications. So time critical medications, we need to document the exact time that this med these medications were given. And just a few examples are angina spray or your GTN sprays, EpiPens, Parkinson's medications, benzodiazepines, dextrose, gels, insulin, opioids, oxygen. Always remember to document the time that these medications were given to the exact time. We don't just sign them as given in the morning, noon, tea and bedtime. We need the exact time that they were given. Timings of medications. As discussed on other sessions, it's important that this medication is given on time and every time. Parkinson's disease is a condition where a lack of dopamine causes uncontrollable tremors. If the medications used to treat Parkinson's are given earlier than prescribed, then this can cause involuntary fidgety movements. And if the medication is given later than prescribed, then this can cause freezing, where it's difficult for the person to move. It's not uncommon for medicines to be taken up to, well, it's not uncommon for this type of medication to be taken up to six times a day. It can be more. However, doctors and consultants have spent a long time getting the timings of these medications just right for the resident. So it's important to ensure that these timings are adhered to. Record the time on the MAR. With the EMAR, system, the time is automatically recorded for you. 
Timings of medications that are not critical, but a delay can affect the medication progress, include anticoagulants, methotrexate, antibiotics, antivirals, steroids, clozapine, lithium, epilepsy, cancer medications. So again, even though these are not considered as time critical, a delay in giving those medications can cause the resident not to recover so quickly. We're going to look, have a chat now about uh, medications not available, one of my favourite subjects. So having a good ordering system and administration process should mean that you won't routinely run out of medication. And on our EMAR system, the system actually um, alerts us to when we're running out of stock seven days before we run out. It's important that we recognise these and act on them. So let's have a look at a little scenario. So Mr Smith has been prescribed an antibiotic course of natrofluoritoin 100 milligram tablets and you've just come on shift and realised there are no tablets available. He's received three days worth already. What, excuse me, what steps would you take? So um, there's no tablets in the trolley. What do we do first of all? First thing we should do is check the quantity received and check the quantity administered. Is it the fact that the course has been completed? It could be that Mr Smith has only been given the quantity of tablets for three days and the course is completed and the previous care nurse hasn't put course completed on the MAR chart or on the EMAR. It's really important that we keep these records up to date because we have occasions where people have been looking for medication and it's just a course completed. Following on from that, what does out of stock mean? So does it mean out of stock with the manufacturer, that there's no date of arrival? And this is the case, then we need to go back to the GP and ask for alternative. It is our responsibility, um, as well as the pharmacist, to check that this has not gone out of stock with the manufacturer and is there an alternative available? Is it out of stock with the pharmacy? So again, the pharmacy says it's out of stock. Speak to them. Explain to them what when you need that medication for. Is it a monthly item? Is it an antibiotic? Can you take the prescription elsewhere? When are they expecting that medication to be delivered to the pharmacy? And will this mean that the resident will be without medication? These are all the questions that we need to be pushing back and asking the pharmacy. Is it out of stock in the care home? So when there's no stock in the care home, has this been ordered? Has it been discontinued? Is it a short course medication as we've discussed before? Are the stock levels correct? When we're looking at out of stock medication, it is really important as a part of our communication to add any additional information on the MAR chart, paper MAR chart, or on the EMAR. So we've put the the medication was unavailable, but has it been ordered? Are we awaiting delivery? Are we looking for an alternative? When's it due in? All this additional information could help support your colleagues and also the resident. The more information we get about where that medication is, the better it's going to be for everybody. And also it gives us time, if it's out of stock with the manufacturer, to go back to the GP and ask for an alternative. So some residents will refuse to take their medication or it could be because the medication is hard to swallow, it tastes unpleasant or causes side effects such as loose stools or constipation. You can usually tell from a person's reaction that they dislike the taste or that the drugs cause unpleasant side effects. Contact the GP for advice on alternatives. There are times when a person is more comfortable taking the medication in a particular setting or with the help of a certain member of staff. Think about your dignity and respect training when administrating medications to your residents. 
If the resident refuses the medication, we can offer the medication later, but this must be documented with the exact time on the MAR chart and does not apply to time critical medications. Remember the resident has the right to refuse. It's important to remember to document on the reverse of the MAR chart or on the EMAR any results or outcomes if the medication is a PRN or when required medication. Do not be tempted to try hiding medication in food. Medication that's hidden in food is called covert medication and needs to be approved and have written consent in place. This should be documented in the care plan and documented on the MAR chart. Think about your MCA and dose training when administrating medications. Does the person have capacity to refuse their medication? If they refuse, try again later and remember to document and report all non-administered medications and inform the manager. If the medication is refused throughout the day, talk calmly to the resident, explain the importance of taking the medication and how it will help them before documenting it as being refused. Remember, Documenting all non-administered medications on the MAR chart is just as important as documenting when a medication is given. This information can, could be important later. Always remember to wash your hands before and after administrating any medications and use the appropriate PPE. Remember to clean the medication trolley before and after each medication round, replenishing the Medipart skipping spoons and syringes. Think about your infection control training when administrating medications. All our medications, as we've said before, have side effects. And these side effects could be headaches, constipation, diarrhea, rashes, sores. And to find out more about the medication, check your patient information leaflet in the medication box or if you have a BNF book or look on the EMC website online for side effects. On our email system, the BNF book is available on your homepage. Remember to monitor the resident for any changes or reactions that may be caused by the medication and report your concerns to the manager. As we've said before, always check the patient information leaflets for any additional advice. Also, always inform the supplying doctor and or pharmacist if the resident is taking any other medications, including herbal medications, vitamins and supplements, even cold and flu preparations. And remember, if the resident has any allergies, these must be documented on the MAR chart. If a relative brings in any medications, these must go onto the MAR chart after being handed in to the home manager. Thank you, Michael. Does anybody have any more questions? Um, I've not had any come through. Um, but one thing I've been wondering while I've been listening to you uh, chat is whose job is it to manage the medications? Is it just down to one person in particular or is there is it meant to be more than one person looking after it? That's a good question, Michael, one uh, that I should have picked up in. Um, usually uh, we have one main person that deals with ordering the medications and managing them in the care home, but it's everybody's responsibility when they're administrating meds to ensure that the medications are available for our residents and they should be ordering the medications if they've run out or it's appropriate. It's not the best idea just to have one person in charge if that person's on the wrong shift or if they're on annual leave or on holiday or you know not on motor what happens okay that resident goes without medications it doesn't get ordered for probably another 24 hours and then there's a delay and that could lead to a safeguarding incident yeah that makes sense there's one person whose job it is to look after it but everyone needs to be working as a team to make sure that there's no holes missed. Absolutely, so absolutely. Uh, and just to add on to that, you know, several times we've been in uh, into care homes and, you know, I've heard it's not my job, such and such does all the ordering of medication. Well, that's not acceptable. It's everybody's responsibility to make sure that the medications are ordered in time. Perfect. Well, 
thank you very much for us today and thank uh, you thank you everyone who's um who's joined in with us they can uh if they do have any other questions how can they contact you michael people can contact me and my telephone number which is 07917 or they can just drop me an email at helenberridge at prime-life.co.uk thank you very much everyone thank you for listening thank you everyone for taking part today and we'll see you again in two weeks time Bye -bye thanks now. a lot bye